On June 2, 1983, Air Canada Flight 797, a McDonnell Douglas DC-9-30, was on a flight from Dallas, Texas to Montreal, Quebec. While en route at 30,000 feet, the three circuit breakers of the aft left toilet flushing motor tripped. The flight crew attempted to reset the breakers, but was not successful. At 1900 hours, a passenger seated in the last row asked a flight attendant to identify a strange odor. Upon opening the lavatory door a few inches, she noticed light gray smoke filling the lavatory, but no flames were visible. The flight attendant in charge was informed of the problem and sent another attendant forward to inform the captain of a possible fire while he began an inspection of the lavatory. As a safety precaution, the cabin crew moved the passengers to the forward cabin. When the flight attendant in charge noticed thick curls of black smoke coming from the seams of the lavatory walls, the top of the wash basin, and the ceiling, he saturated the lavatory with a handheld CO2 fire extinguisher. A flight attendant informed the flight crew of the presence of a fire in the aft lavatory and that the flight attendant in charge had gone to extinguish the fire. A second unsuccessful attempt was made to reset the tripped circuit breakers. When the breakers tripped following this reset attempt, the captain then told the first officer to go back and inspect the lavatory. However, the smoke was too thick over the last few seat rows, so he returned to the cockpit. The first officer, on his return to the flight deck, informed the captain that a descent would be advisable, but also stated that it need not be immediately. At about that time, a flight attendant informed the captain that passengers had been moved forward, away from the lavatory, and expected that the smoke was going to dissipate. After further discussion, the first officer attempted to return to the lavatory equipped with smoke goggles. A flight attendant then informed the captain that the flight attendant in charge had previously discharged a CO2 fire extinguisher in the lavatory and confirmed that the smoke seemed to be subsiding. A series of electrical malfunctions then occurred, causing loss of the left AC and DC electrical systems and resulting in the illumination of the master caution light. The first officer returned to the cockpit without having looked inside the lavatory as the door was hot to the touch. The first officer again informed the captain that they should descend. The captain concurred with the first officer's suggestion and preparations were begun for an emergency descent to the nearest airport, Greater Cincinnati Airport. Nine minutes, five seconds after the odor was first detected, the flight crew declared an emergency to Indianapolis Center and a descent towards Greater Cincinnati Airport was initiated. Because of the delayed decision to descend, the airplane lost the opportunity to land at Louisville. The accident investigation concluded that the delayed descent resulted in an overflight of an airport that would have allowed landing significantly sooner than was actually accomplished. The second flight path depicted in this animation estimates the time to descend and land at this alternate airport and illustrates the investigation's concern regarding the delay in starting the descent. Had the decision been made at this point to divert to the nearest airport, Louisville, Flight 797 could have landed three to five minutes earlier. The investigators determined that the delayed decision to descend and land contributed to the severity of the accident.